So the way I have the routing set up for this specific song, I went through the SSL for quite a few of the elements. I went through the SSL with my drums, with my bass, with uh, some of the strings that are playing in the song, and maybe some other few elements. And then the outputs of the SSL, which in this case has three different buses, bus A, bus B, and bus C, the outputs are actually being cascaded into my Submixer. I submix many of the elements. I actually mix all of the elements in the box for this specific song. I decided to go through the SSL with all of the elements because I wanted to have more of a blended feeling, you know, uh, with the drums. I wanted to sort of like get rid of some of the edge of the drums. You know, I wanted. I was going for a very specific sonic goal, and that's the only reason why I did it. So in this mix specifically, we have the drums coming to the SSL through some outputs, we have the bass, we have some strings and a few other elements. Those are going through some SSL buses. Uh, for example, the bass is going to bus A and bus C, and the strings are going to bus B. And each one of those buses has its own processing. For example, the drums have the atomic squeeze box compressor, a tiny bit of EQ. The bass doesn't have anything in the insert, basically. And then the strings do actually have like an overall EQ, uh, have a a manly massive passive EQ, you know, in the insert of that one. The outputs of these three buses go into my summing box and the rest of the elements from my Pro Tools session also go to the additional inputs of my summing box. So my SSL and my in-the-box mixing is being added and summed in the summing box. And from the summing box, this is not something I always do, but in this specific case, I go to a sort of like a mastering, you know, box that has inserts where I can insert different EQs and compressors into the mix. For example, in this case, I did use some parallel compression and I saw you earlier how much the parallel compression was doing. It was actually doing quite a bit. So the parallel compression will be something that is really, really affected by the energy of the track. So it is the only pre-mastering or master bus element I wouldn't add on at the very beginning of the mixing process. The rest I do add early on in the mixing process. For example, if I decide to use the Sontech to give a little bit of extra 1K to the mix, I do it early on on the mixing process because it's going to affect every decision I do while I'm mixing. You know, if I'm EQing a guitar or if I'm EQing the vocal, the same with uh, some of the compression. But my parallel compression, because it's so dependent on my program, Let's say like midway through the mixing process, when I have all of the energy of the mix happening, I have, you know, the drums pumping and I have the bass and I have the vocals, everything, most of the energy is there. Then I experiment a little bit with the parallel compression. In this case, my parallel compression going through my LA-2As is really giving me that extra dimensional element in the stereo field. It's actually widening the stereo field a tiny bit more. It does affect your center. It does affect your center because it affects the, the way the bass speaks out. So very often when you apply the parallel compression, you have to reconsider what you did with the kick, with the snare, with the vocal. Sometimes you have to change levels slightly. You have to re a little bit those elements in order to accommodate this new you know, uh, compression into the mix. In other cases, when I'm going for less of the glue in the mix, which is not only dependent on the effects you use, by the way, because people think like glue you create with just effects. No, glue you also create with your choices of summing, your choices of share compression, share elements in the mix. Basically, for example, here I'm using the same bass for the drums as I'm using for the bass. I wanted them to blend in a specific way. A bass A, mix bass A, just to blend them together. So they will actually get additional compression all together. If I wanted to have a more distinct bass line, I will probably use a different bass in the SSL. I wouldn't go through the same bass as the drums. I will separate it from the drums. If I wanted an in-between approach, I will basically route the bass not just to bass A, but I will also go to a different bass, bass C, and dedicate bass C just to the bass. Maybe even with, it, with its own unique additional compression or EQ. So just giving you, you know, more of an explanation of what my thinking is when I'm routing things. And this happens like super early on uh, when I evaluate the song. I go like, okay, I'm going for the glue in this song or I'm going for more of a shared landscape 
then I'm going to share a lot of effects between the different elements of the mix. I'm going to share the same effects that I'm using on the guitars. I'm going to use them also on the keyboards. Or I might even use them on the vocal if, you know, if the approach you know, asks for it. So in terms of the routing, one extra element to be known is you know, how I use the, my submixer. My submixer has 16 inputs and it has two outputs, just the stereo out, right? That's my final mix in this case. My final mix you know, happens in that box. That box is actually, in this case, feeding an MTC-1X little mastering console. I use this to be able to insert, let's say like pre-mastering elements to the mix and be able to compare you know, one and another. So the stereo output from this submixer it goes into this Maselec MTC-1X a mastering console. The submixer is basically being fed the three stereo outputs of the SSL, but it's also being fed stereo outputs from Pro Tools. Those are actually part of my in-the-box mix. For example, I might decide that I use two outputs from my Apogees that are being fed to the submixer, and I might decide I put all of the vocals through there. Or I might have another stereo pair, which is actually outputting all of the guitars, or most of the guitars. I might have another stereo one, which is outputting the keyboards. So I separate some of the elements. A big benefit of this Oracle box is that even in the submixer, it has additional inserts. So I can also insert in the box additional processing. If I was, for example, outputting the vocals, to inputs 15 and 6, 16 of the sub mixer, if I wanted to further compress all of those vocals plus the effects that are being fed from Pro Tools, I could do so by just the click of an insert switch. I mentioned that the sub mixer is also feeding this little mastering console that I have, and it really allows me to very easily, in the different inserts that the box has, put like a final mix EQ into it put some compression options into it. I love the SSL compressor, for example, for my final mix. But whenever I'm dedicating that stereo compressor to something very specific on the SSL, like for example, the drums or the bass, I need to have an additional one for the, my final mix. And that's what I do. I have an, uh, an additional you know, SSL compressor in one of my racks. I have my uh, Sado Hills compressor. I have my Vacubox U23M compressors. I have some EQ that is usually very subtle, subtracting EQ, which is my GML mastering EQ. I have some other EQ that's more like a flavor EQ, which is my Sontech EQ. With the Sontech, I usually don't do much. It's just to enhance a very, very specific frequency. For example, with the GML in this case, I'm cutting out some mid-range, like 300 and maybe a tiny bit in the, in the upper, like 550. But then on my Sontech, I'm enhancing a tiny little bit 1K and I'm enhancing a tiny little bit of 10K. And we're talking like very, very subtle in this case. I'm not afraid of going far with, with that either. I mean, sometimes I just go nuts. This setup allows me to be able to compare between the different compression options easily and quickly and make a quick decision on it because I make some of these decisions super early on in the mix and it stays for the rest of the mix. I don't truly do mastering. This is not mastering at all. It's not even pre-mastering like some people would like to refer to. It's really mix processing. And I view it that way because it stays from early, early, early on. The moment I have some sounds going, I have the drums, I have the bass, I have the vocal, I already apply all of these processes. And it's only because it's like an overall vibe that I want to apply to the full mix, not because I'm trying to master the song.